Copper is everywhere, inside your phone, your house wiring, even your car. It's one of the most used metals in the world because it conducts electricity so well. But mining copper is expensive and harmful to the environment. That's why more and more industries are turning to recycling. In fact, nearly one-third of the copper used today comes from recycled scrap. It saves money and reduces the need for digging up the earth. But what really happens inside a copper recycling factory? And is it as green as it sounds? In this video, we'll show you how copper is recycled step by step, from collecting old wires and pipes to melting it down and turning it into something new. The process is fast, fiery, and a little dangerous, but we're not just showing the cool machines. We'll also expose the darker side of the industry, unsafe working conditions, toxic fumes, and the environmental damage many factories cause. If you like learning how things are made and the real stories behind them, hit that subscribe button. We're trying to reach our first 1,000 subscribers, and your support makes a big difference. The copper recycling process starts with collecting scrap. This includes old electrical wires, plumbing pipes, electronics, motors, and even roofing materials. Some of it comes from construction sites, while other scrap is brought in by people who collect and sell metal for cash. Once it reaches the factory, the copper is sorted. Not all scrap is the same. Some types are pure copper, while others are mixed with plastic, rubber, or steel. Workers and machines separate the clean copper from the rest. In many places, this is done by hand, which can be dangerous and time-consuming. After sorting, the copper is shredded or chopped into smaller pieces. This makes it easier to handle in the next step. Once the copper scrap is sorted and chopped, it heads to the melting furnace. These are massive, blazing hot machines that reach temperatures over 1,000 degrees Celsius, more than 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. The copper pieces are loaded in and slowly melt down into a thick, orange liquid. Factories often add chemicals or oxygen during this step to help remove impurities like dirt, oil, or leftover metals. This stage is called refining, and it's crucial for getting the copper clean and reusable. Pure copper is reddish and shiny. Dirty copper is darker and less valuable. But working around these furnaces is no joke. Many workers face extreme heat, toxic smoke, and poor ventilation. In some factories, especially in developing countries, workers don't have proper safety gear. No gloves, no masks, not even face shields. The risk of burns and breathing problems is very real. Once the copper is fully melted and refined, it's poured into molds to cool. This step is quick but also dangerous because splashes of molten copper can cause severe injuries. From a distance, this process looks efficient, but behind the scenes, it's full of health hazards and safety shortcuts that put workers at serious risk. Once the copper is melted and cleaned, it's time to shape it into something new. This is called casting. The molten copper is poured into molds to form big blocks, rods, or thin sheets, depending on what it will be used for next. After cooling, these solid pieces are taken to another part of the factory where they're cut, rolled, or stretched into new forms. Some copper becomes wires for electronics, some turns into pipes for plumbing, and some gets flattened into sheets for roofs or circuit boards. This part of the process looks more like a regular manufacturing line, with machines pulling and shaping the metal. But even here, the conditions can be tough. The machines are fast and powerful, and workers often stand for long hours near hot equipment, sometimes without proper rest breaks or clean air. In well-run factories, there are safety guards, warning signs, and training. But in cheaper operations, these things are missing. Workers face noise, dust, and heat. And if something goes wrong, injuries can happen fast. At this point, the copper is recycled and ready to be sold. But while copper recycling helps save natural resources, the conditions inside many recycling factories are far from safe. In countries where labor laws are weak or poorly enforced, workers face long hours in hot, smoky environments with little to no protection. In the melting area, temperatures can soar above 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit, yet many workers wear only basic clothing, no fireproof suits, no face shields, and sometimes not even gloves. Accidents like burns, cuts, and toxic smoke inhalation are common. And when safety equipment is available, 
It's often old, damaged, or ignored due to rushed production schedules. Workers are also exposed to harmful substances during the refining process. These can include lead, arsenic, and sulfur fumes, all of which can cause serious health issues over time. Without proper masks or ventilation, breathing in these toxins daily can lead to chronic lung problems, nerve damage, and even cancer. Worse, many factories don't provide health care or insurance for injuries. If a worker gets hurt, they may be forced to keep working or risk losing their job altogether. Child labor and underpaid workers are also issues in some regions, where desperate families send young teens to work in dangerous conditions just to survive. Another problem that occurs, copper recycling may seem like an environmentally friendly process, and in many ways, it is. But that doesn't mean it's clean. The melting and refining process releases harmful gases like sulfur dioxide and heavy metal fumes into the air. In poorly regulated factories, these gases are not filtered or contained. They escape into nearby communities, causing air pollution, breathing problems, and acid rain. Liquid waste from the process is another problem. Some factories use water to cool and clean the copper, but instead of treating the dirty water, they dump it into rivers or open land. This water can contain toxic chemicals, including lead and mercury, which can poison soil, harm crops, and kill fish and animals nearby. There's also the issue of solid waste, the leftover ash, sludge, and contaminated dust. If not stored properly, this waste can leak into the ground and pollute drinking water sources. In some developing countries, entire neighborhoods live near these recycling plants. Children grow up breathing in smoke and playing on polluted soil. Over time, the health and environment in these areas slowly break down. So while recycling copper helps the planet in theory, in reality, it often just moves the damage from one place to another, unless it's done responsibly. The good news? Some companies and countries are working hard to make copper recycling safer for workers. In better-run factories, workers now wear heat-resistant gear, face masks, and gloves. Automated machines handle the most dangerous tasks, like pouring molten copper, reducing the risk of injury. Governments are also stepping in, setting stricter safety rules and requiring regular inspections. Worker training is another big improvement. In safer factories, employees learn how to handle materials properly and what to do if something goes wrong. Some factories even offer health care and better wages, small but important steps toward fairer conditions. But there's still a long way to go, especially in places where safety takes a backseat to profits. Some factories are also taking steps to reduce the environmental damage caused by copper recycling. Modern plants now use air filters and scrubbers to trap harmful fumes before they escape into the air. Others have installed closed-loop water systems, which clean and reuse water instead of dumping it into rivers or the ground. There's also growing use of cleaner energy sources like solar or natural gas to power the recycling process. Some companies are even recycling their own waste turning leftover ash and dust into safe materials for construction. While these solutions cost more upfront, they help protect the environment and the health of nearby communities in the long run. The challenge is getting all factories to follow these practices, not just a few. So, recycling copper sounds like a win for the planet, but behind the scenes, it often comes with a human and environmental cost. Unsafe working conditions, Toxic air and polluted rivers are a reality for many who do this work. The good news? With the right technology and responsibility, it can be done right. If you learned something new today, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to reach 1,000 subscribers and your support means everything.